All right, we're going. It's better we're recording. Um, all right, guys, what is up? So basically, kind of something new. I'm gonna be doing these like podcasts. I already started this, kind of like a month ago, and then I took a break. I did a few um, just podcasts on this baseball podcast network, and I was thinking maybe I should do like a little video version of it on my GoPro, and just like post it whenever like I, I make these podcasts what am I saying like whenever I make the audio podcast I should also do like just a video version on YouTube for you guys on um, these podcasts are also on um a few apps like the podcast app I'll also leave the link in the description uh for another website to listen to it um basically if you're a huge Angels fan or if you're just an Angels fan you should check out this podcast because it's basically just like a general insight on the angels, how they're doing, my opinions. It's just an angels podcast. It's pretty much all to explain about it. And I'm probably going to be doing like a co-host too. I'll probably get my brother in it. Like, I'm just trying new things, you know? I'm probably going to get better at it at time as time goes on. So it may not be great right now. But yeah, basically, just stay tuned and listen um, if you're interested. I already made like the first three podcasts, so this is podcast number four. I actually took like a month off because I was kind of busy this summer, but I'm going to be making these podcasts like every Sunday, probably post a video, a video version of it Monday. I got to get my voice right because <laughs> I got I to gotta do this whole podcast. Um, but yeah, guys, stay tuned if you're interested. If you just want to see me vlog at Angel Stadium, just stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, guys, I'm about to start this podcast. I don't know where do I where I look at. Do I look at what I'm supposed to say or hear? Hmm. All right. We're just gonna go into it. Um, there might be a few mistakes or whatever, but we're just gonna go with whatever. Going live on the podcast right now. Let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of Halo Talk. This is gonna be a very big episode, and there's a lot to talk about. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, as you guys know, probably know I've been gone for a month. There was a few reasons for me like taking a quick break. Um, I've been on trips and I've been going places this summer. It's kind of been like half me forgetting to make podcasts. And I've also kind of chose to take a few weeks off because of something that happened to the Angels on July 1st. So basically, I'm not basically, so let's just, before this podcast starts, or at the beginning of this podcast, what we need to talk about is the news on July 1st. Tyler Skaggs was found dead in the team hotel in Texas on Monday afternoon on July 1st. The immediate news, the immediate, the immediate shock of this news was just crazy. Tyler Skaggs has been, was on the Angels for one of the longest times. Out of the roster, he was one of the longest tenured players on the team. Um, not only that, he had one of the greatest personalities on the team. And he was also becoming a really good pitcher. So, man, I mean, I remember when I got the news. It was just, I was actually... So we went to Texas, me and my brothers, to see the Angels play there on that whole road trip. Um, I was actually walking to the stadium when I heard the news. And at first I didn't really believe it. I thought it was just some weird joke. But then realized all the articles and realized how real it was. And pretty much immediately I just turned all of my sadness towards his family, friends, and also his teammates, I mean, teammates are like, I feel so bad for them. They're basically family. They're all family for more than half the year from February to October. Uh, for the angel, at least the past, past, past few years, not to October, October till September. Um, they spend every single day with each other for more than half of the year, like I just said. Um, I mean, yeah, they're basically family and I feel really horrible for all of them. Like Trout said, 
he said he spends more time with his teammates than his family, which is just crazy. And yeah, it just feels horrible for his family and friends. Just so shocking. And yeah, the game that day was canceled. So I think they're planning on making it up uh, this ne next past week or this upcoming week. Um, this kind of makes the season for the Angels more than baseball. This is definitely what we saw on July 12th when the Angels threw a no-hitter at Angel Stadium. And this wasn't a regular no-hitter at all. This was the first Angels home game since Tyler Skaggs' death. The game they were honoring him and everyone on the Angels were wearing Tyler Skaggs' uniform. Also, Tyler Skaggs' mother threw out the first pitch and she threw a strike. This was one of the many crazy coincidences that kind of happened this game. Like things that just lined up to Tyler Skaggs. Uh, first of all, the Angels scored seven runs in the first inning and thir 13 in total, winning 13-0. And 7-13, July 13th, is Tyler Skaggs' birthday. This is also the 11th no-hitter in Angels history. And Tyler Skaggs wore jersey number 11 in high school. Um, this is the craziest coincidence to me. The last no-hitter thrown in California was the day he was born. It's weird because it's almost like his life began with a no-hitter and ended with one. As weird as it sounds. He was watching over, I mean, it just seemed like he was watching over the Angels all game as they had a perfect game winning 13-0. And this is also, there's something else crazy that happened, which I see similar to what happened to Jose Fernandez and what D. Gordon did. When the Marlins played their first home game since Jose Fernandez's death, and they were honoring him wearing his uniform, D. Gordon hits a home run on his first at bat. A no doubt or two for D Gordon, which is just kind of crazy. And also, what I saw um, when I searched up, it was his only home run all year, and it was on his first at on the first at bat of the game too. And the first Angels home game after Tyler Skaggs' death, Mike Trout hits a bomb on the first pitch he sees. He hits it 454 feet. Not only that, a no doubter. It's 45, the first two numbers, and the actually the last two numbers going backwards is both 45, which is Tyler Skaggs' number. Shortstop, Kozart at third, Maldonado at catcher, and then Trout, Calhoun, and Upton in outfield. This year, it's Albert Pujols at first base, Renhifo at second, Simmons at short, Fletcher at third, Lucroy at catcher for the most part, and again, Trout, Calhoun, and Upton in the outfield. Um, and also to add Tommy LaStella, he, he's been starting all year and he will start when he's back. Um, but this year, the Angels definitely have the edge. Let's get into the positions right now. Kind of starting in middle infield, David Fletcher and Tommy LaStella are kind of the new guys this year. Um, last year, Zach Cozart and, um, damn it, Ian Kinsler. Sorry, uh, they put up, uh, well, okay, all right, Zach Cozart, let's just start with him. He's put up, last year, one of the worst years I've kind of ever seen. His on-base percentage was way less than 300, OPS less than 700, and he hit in the low 200s. I mean, compared to his last season before, in that season, 2018, was just really bad and I don't really have any hope for him this year at third base it's been David Fletcher that has been a huge upgrade David Fletcher is an on-base percentage over 350 an OPS of about 770 at the moment um, he's really young and this is his first full season pretty much kind of his second season but his first season he only played like 50 games I think it's more of a like a later call-up uh, not quite a September call-up, but I think in like July or August. Um, he was, believe it or not, he kind of had a close to an all-star type of first half of the season. 
Not quite. But I definitely think in the future he's going to have at least a few All-Stars. The future is really bright for him. The future is also bright for Luis Renjifo at second base. His numbers this year offensively are pretty similar to Ian Kinsler last year at second base. But kind of the difference is Ian Kinsler was starting at second last year. And Luis Renjifo is off the bench. The only reason Renjifo starting at second is because... Um, um, Tommy Estella is injured right now. Uh, right now, Renjifo, uh, he got called up this year. He's already not doing too bad. He's been doing well, seven, over 700 OPS and 330 on base percentage, which is pretty good. He's only 22. He's a rookie. Um, he's going to get better. For now, um, once Tommy Estella comes back, Renjifo will probably be a utility player off the bench. bench. But he definitely has a great future for himself. He's definitely going to be one of the better starters on the team in the future. Um, what we're talking about as of this season right now. So this season, he's having a pretty decent season. He's actually, I remember a stat, I forgot it. Too lazy to search it. He's hit so many um, line drives and hard hits. But he's sort of an unlucky type of player this season. So his stats should be basically a little higher. Um, uh, but yeah, once Tommy Lestella comes back, he should be starting at second base. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Tommy Lestella and how he did the first half of the season. He had, he hit over 300, he's gone on base over, damn it, I'm, I'm messing up this podcast. I haven't done a podcast for a month, okay? He's hit an over 350 on base percentage. And about 850 OPS. He also hit 16 home runs, which is really impressive. He hasn't hit that many home runs his whole career up until this season, which was, and also 16 home runs is on pace to almost 40 home runs if he's healthy the whole season, which is crazy. Um, so we should probably talk about slugging, which would bring us to Cole Calhoun, has done way better this season. He's hit. I think he himself, too, is on pace for at least 30 home runs. I actually didn't check. I didn't check earlier to see how many home runs he had this year, but it's way more than he's ever had before. So search it if you can right now. He's having such a great year this year compared to his other years. His OPS has improved drastically. Well, all of, off- all, all of his offensive stats have um, increased drastically from last year. He was really bad last year. His OPS was a crazy low 650. His on-base percentage was 280. Um, but it's good that the Angels didn't give up on him last year because he now has a 790 OPS and 330 on-base percentage. He's easily one of the better hitters in the league now and having way better of a season this year than last year. So as far as right field, it's an upgrade from last year too. Now in center field, you might know this guy, Mike Trout. He is somehow getting better and better every year. He's leading the AL in home runs with 31. OPS over 1,100, which right now is actually career OPS is at 999, which is about to go up to 1,000. Career OPS over 1,000 over a decade of playing. There's not much to say about him other than we've never seen a better player in his first eight seasons. We've never seen a better first eight season by a player in baseball history. Um, I could just talk about him for hours, but we don't really have that time. There's not much else to say other than he's amazing. He's just, I, I mean, you guys all know how good he is. Well, nobody knows quite how good he is. He's honestly so underrated. But, um, yeah, let's just move on. There's center field. He's some, well, yeah, Mike Trout is somehow doing better this year. He's going to keep getting better every year. So, yeah, center field is somehow an upgrade from last year. So, let's move to left field. Justin Upton. Okay, this is, it's not too much, it's not an upgrade or a downgrade, okay? He's been injured half of this year, which was unfortunate for him. He got injured in spring training, 
at the end of it he injured his toe right now he has a 760 ops and a 340 on base percentage which is a little under than what he usually does um but he'll definitely get his stats up and um looking at his stats he's really consistent every year as a really good hitter and he'll continue to be that way so not an upgrade or a downgrade at left field i mean obviously it's the same player who we know is going to do the same thing that he done last year um, also what's an upgrade was not really in the starting lineup but is Brian Goodwin who's been a huge sleeper his on base percentage is about 340 his OPS is at 780 he's been so productive this year and with the games that he's played and he easily deserved the starting spot on any team but unfortunately for him the Angels just have a great outfield with Trout, Calhoun, and Upton right now so only gets to play some of the games. He has been starting though pretty much almost every game for the first half though because Upton's been injured and he's definitely been shining this first half at least. Um, he just hit a home run I think today he had an off of opposite field two run home run. So he did start this game. Um, so yeah he's been getting to play a lot and he'll be off probably off the bench most games for the, for the rest of the season but he is really good. Um, and also, let's quickly talk about, I probably said this before in other podcasts, but we're gonna talk about this again. We have four great outfielders, like I just said, this year, and we're gonna be getting an addition of Joe Adele next year, the Angels' top prospect, and MLB top 10 prospect. He looks like he just has such a good future ahead of him, and he's definitely gonna be starting next year which means at the very least one outfielder will have to go next year. It's going to be Goodwin or Calhoun, obviously. Um, and honestly, I don't know. If I were the manager, I, didn't, I don't really know what should be done. But obviously what I do know is that Calhoun or Goodwin won't be on the team. One of those, at least one of those won't be on the team by next year. And they're both free agents. And I know that both of them will know that they won't be starters if they re-sign with the Angels. Unless Upton gets injured or something like that. Or someone gets injured, they'll be off the bench. Um, so I think the Angels will probably be able to re-sign one of them. Which will probably... I think the Angels will re-sign Cole Calhoun. He's having such a good year. It's hard not to re-sign him. Cole Calhoun seems like he'd be loyal to the Angels. Because he just has such a big bond with the team. He's pretty much best friends with Trout and all that. I don't see Cole Calhoun leaving the Angels, and I think we could use him off the bench starting next year. Um, anyway, kind of off topic, let's get back to the starting uh, lineup and go to catching. Jonathan Lucroy has been the starting catcher all year, but he's out right now because of an injury. We'll talk about the injury later, but he's been out with a concussion. Um, but the time he's been playing... His offensive stats are an upgrade than our catcher last year, Martin Maldonado. Um, Maldonado is, I believe, a bit of a better catcher defensively than Lucroy. They're both really, really good, but Maldonado himself has won gold glove last year, actually. Or maybe the year before, I think last year. But Lucroy himself also is a really good defensive catcher. Um, so... They're both really good defensively. Maldonado might have an edge, but Luke Croy himself is also one of the better defensive catchers. Um, and he's hitting a lot better than Maldonado has for the Angels last uh, season. Um, so this position is probably the only part that could be questionable, whether it's an upgrade or downgrade. Um, because other than catcher, kind of every other position is an upgrade. Well, left, well, left field, left field the same. Um, but yeah, I think catching this year is an upgrade though because of the backup catchers this year. The backup catchers are Dustin Garneau and Kevin Smith. I really like Kevin Smith. He's been having such a good year. I don't know how he hasn't been playing in more games. His OPS in his 30 games he's played this year is 810. And his on-base percentage is 375. If he can even like slightly keep it this up, he should be the starting catcher. 
I'm just not sure if he's that good on defense, though. That's obviously the big problem. Um, and then also, um, Dustin Garneau, he had a home run today, actually. He's doing pretty well hitting, and he's a good defensive catcher. So he's a good backup catcher, too. We kind of had three good catchers now, which is crazy. Because the backup catcher last year was who Juan Gratterall. No, Jose Braseno was a backup catcher last year. He wasn't that bad either, but definitely I don't think he's like a big league level caliber player. He's just been in Triple A all this year, I believe. Um, so the last uh, position on the field is first base. And our Pujols has actually been a lot better this year than last year. Um, I kind of have a little bit of respect for him because he definitely has a really good work ethic. He just always wants to get better. Even if he's getting a year older, he's actually gotten a better year this year than that last year. Um, so far in the second half, he's actually been on a tear. He's hitting over 400 uh, average in the second half. Um, his season stats this year, he has an OPS of about 760, which is pretty good. Um, um, also to clarify, every time I say a stat, I'm like kind of rounding it to the 10. I'm not like saying the exact number. So it's pretty much every time I say it, it's like rounded to the 10. Whatever, that doesn't matter. Anyway, 760 OPS and 310 on base percentage. This is a huge upgrade from last year. Last year he had a 700 OPS and an under 290 on base percentage. Um, so yeah, I just explained kind of every main, every starter um, this season compared to last season. It's pretty much just all a big upgrade from last season. Um, let's talk about something that's not an upgrade from last season. Um, starting pitching. I don't want to talk about this, but I have to. Um, this isn't going to be fun. Okay, starting pitching has been awful as it's always been. At least, you know, within the last two, three years, whatever. Starting pitching is probably the only thing holding this team back from championship contenders. And my GoPro stopped recording again. No, it just randomly beeped. It just beeped for no reason. I'm trying to record this podcast and also put up a video version on YouTube. Um, I think it's going. Yeah, it's going again. Um, stupid GoPro, they're interrupting the podcast. Anyway, starting pitching. Um, this is the one thing that's kind of been a downgrade this year. Last year's starting pitching with Andrew Heaney, Jaime Berea, Felix Pena, Tyler Skaggs, Garrett Richards, and Nick Tropiano. That was mainly like the six starters. Um... There were a few other starters that like came in and out and did bad, but uh, for the most part, these six pitchers were solid. Um, maybe Nick Tropiano was the only one that wasn't too great, but everyone else is not too bad. Um, obviously not great, but the starting pitching last year just wasn't that bad. <clears throat> this year though, goddamn, the Angels picked up Matt Harvey and Trevor Cahill both paying them at least $10 million or more than $10 million. Um, and both of them are two of the five worst starting pitching pitchers this season, according to stats. And Matt Harvey's probably the worst pitcher in baseball this season, up until now. He's finally been, been DFA'd after blowing up his last start. Um, Trevor Cahill has been put into the bullpen after his horrible starts. So he can only come in games that aren't close. So he won't blow any more games. Uh, Andrew Heaney hasn't had a good season. He's at an ERA over five. He actually has a small injury right now with uh, shoulder inflammation. And yeah, he's out for like 10 days, something like that. Felix Pena hasn't been quite as good as last year with an ERA of 4.9. Uh, we're not going to really get mad at him though. Because he just pitched no hitter a couple of days ago. Not a couple of days ago, a couple of starts ago. Um, Jaime Berea. Jesus Christ. This guy has been terrible this year. And it's just, it's just a weird kind of surprise. He's been up and down this season from AAA. 
This year he's pitched over seven ERA, over eight starts. Um, um, as a contrast of having a great last year, last year he, as his rookie year he had a three point four one ERA in twenty six games. So I think we all kind of thought he would become like a future ace kind of player. I mean that's just such a good rookie season, and I believed in him so much, and he's just blown up this season. He allowed like eight runs to the Mariners last start. So I don't really know what's going on with him. He's definitely got to figure out what he did last year, you know. Um, so there's pretty much a downgrade in every starting pitcher. Also, obviously, we haven't been really lucky as Tyler Skaggs passed away, which puts, puts, puts us in more need of starting pitching. Um, we're actually in a situation right now, which is similar to last season, where we literally don't have enough starting pitching, which is pretty annoying, obviously. It's, it just, yeah, it sucks. Uh, Dylan Peter was called up to pitch today, and luckily he actually pitched a shutout over five innings, um, which is pretty good. It's a pretty impressive start. Let's see, hopefully he can pick it up and at least be a decent pitcher, because we definitely need that. We need some pitchers to start up to or pick it up or step up if we want any chance in the playoffs. Um, anyway, JC Ramirez luckily is coming back soon. He's on a rehab assignment right now. Uh, Keelan Middleton, he's in the bullpen. I'm going to talk about the bullpen in a second, but he's going to be back soon. Um, so we definitely need the starting pitching to step it up for sure. Um, uh, let's move. Actually, we have a few bright spots in pitching. Griffin Canning has been looking really good this year. He's been a top pitching prospect, and he's on his rookie year. He does have a 4.5 ERA, but his whip is exactly 1.18 right now, which is really good. He's just allowed a few runs that he probably shouldn't have, and his ERA is definitely going to be going down. And he's, I think he's going to be a future ace. And he's just going to become such a good hit, pit, hitter. I almost just said hitter. He's going to be such a good pitcher uh, throughout his career. I, I'm i doing really bad this podcast. Once I get into the groove of like making a podcast every week, I'm going to get better. Um, and then finally, who I want to quickly talk about, Jose Suarez. Um... He's been getting some starts this year. He's a rookie too. Um, he hasn't been too good yet. He has a 5.5 ERA. But I think he's going to be a great, at least at the very least, a solid starting pitcher for us in the future. He just hasn't been good, quite good yet. He's had a few starts where he's kind of blown up and allowed a lot of runs. But he has had some pretty decent starts. Um, yeah, I'll just get out of this whole starting pitching situation and just hope it gets better and pitchers just step up <clears throat> or starting pitching just hope they step up let's move to the bullpen because the bullpen has just been such a crazy upgrade from last season their bullpen last season our bullpen well yeah the Angels bullpen last season was one of the worst in baseball um, in this season, they're one of the better bullpens in the league. I think they're one of the best. They're going to, well, that's kind of, that might be a little too much, but they're definitely one of the better. I'd say probably in the top 10 bullpens this season. Yeah, I think they definitely are in the top 10. Um, we've seen awesome years from Hansel Robles and Ty Buttry, who both have ERAs around 2.5, which is just Awesome, right? Awesome. We've also seen great years from Cameron Drosian, Noe Ramirez, and Justin Anderson. Hansel Robles and Ty Buttry are both new pickups. Hansel Robles from the Mets. Ty Buttry is a rookie this year. He's from the Red Sox organization. He's been a prospect. Um, Hansel Robles has proven himself self as a great closer. Ty Buttry has been an amazing setup man. Along with Cameron Drosian, he's been a great setup man too. Um, Ty Buttry should have Ty Buttry probably should have made the All-Star game this year um, and then we've seen Justin Anderson, Noe Ramirez Cam Adrosian 
all have way better years. So Justin Anderson last year went from about a 4 ERA to a 3.8. Noe Ramirez went from a 4.5 ERA to a 3.2. Cam Bedrosian went from a 3.8 to a 3.3 ERA. Bottom line, all these guys are getting better in the bullpen, and they're continuing to get better. They're young. They're getting better and better. And this bullpen and all is just so much better. And and the combination of this lineup and bullpen just makes me so surprised to see how they're not in the playoff picture. Um, I do think the Angels are really slept on right now. And if the starting pitching could just be decent, they're going to definitely go on a great run. We're, again, we're going to get more into that later. Um, not later. We're, we're going to get into it right now. Okay, let's think about how good the Angels could do the rest of the season. Um, to me, the Angels are kind of like a team that needs to just take some time in the beginning of the season, or at least like the first month, just to find their groove and just settle in. Um, this is what I, I looked at the schedule and counted their records every month. And this is what I found. So the first month and or a couple of days in, into March 2 in the whole month of April, they went 13 and 17 in this first month of baseball. In May, they went 14 and 13. June, they went 15 and 13. And so far this month in July, they've gone 10 and 6. So every month has been better and better. And I think it will continue like that. At the very least, the Angels should make the wild card race really close. The look of it right now, the Angels are 5.5 games back. And uh, today they actually passed the Rangers in the division. And of course the wild card race. The Rangers are something like 6 or 6.5 games back. Um, then the Red Sox are 3 games back. Rays are 1 game back. And the Indians and A's both hold the wild card spot. Obviously the Astros look like they're running away with the division like they do every year. Um, the Angels are going to have some crucial games coming up. They have to play the Dodgers um, on Tuesday and Wednesday. So tomorrow and the day after. They have to play them a couple games. But after that quick series, they, have, they get to play the Orioles and Tigers. Which is just a really easy stretch. The Angels have actually done good against the Dodgers though. The uh, last couple times they played them this season. They beat them both games they've seen them this season. So hopefully they'll do good against the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. Um, and as far as against the Orioles and Tigers, they should be able to rack up some wins. Um, so I think this upcoming week, they're against the Dodgers and Orioles. So we're going to be talking about that next episode next Sunday. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, okay, the next and then the last couple months of baseball... Basically, they're off to play the Indian and Red Sox after the Tigers. They're both in the wild card race, so this is kind of a crucial uh, little ser couple series here because both the Indian and Red Sox are going for the wild card. Um, the Angels can kind of gain some ground in the wild card if they can win the these games. Um, and also in between there, they get a few games against the Reds, which should be need which are probably an easy team. And then the Pirates and White Sox, um, which should be another easy couple series. Angels have sort of an easy stretch coming up, which is really good. It can help gain their confidence when they go into September and play some tough teams like the Astros and the Yankees. Um, basically in September, they have a lot of games against teams in the division. But I do believe they have, I can check right here, they have a series against the Yankees. Series against the Indians. They do get to play the White Sox, though. But then the Rays, A's, a couple series against the Astros. Um, so, yeah, that should be a competitive final month. Uh, basically, this whole last couple months should be really exciting. The wild card race, playoff race, is just going to heat up. So, basically, a combination of playing some easy teams and then also player teams are going up against. So hopefully this um, last couple months can work out. The schedule can work out for the Angels. Um, it's just 
all going to be so exciting. Um, you know what else is going to be exciting? L.A. basketball. Uh, we're not going to talk about any basketball, though, in this episode. So I just already went through a lot. I just talked about a lot of baseball in this episode. I don't think we have time to talk about basketball. It's already been 38 minutes. I think this podcast is going to go for 40 minutes. Um, we've reached the end of the podcast. Just, just in case you don't know, these podcasts will be out every Sunday night. And sometimes really late because I get lazy and I have to take a few hours to prepare these podcasts. Um, so you can check them out on Monday if you don't stay up late. It's actually like 4 a.m. right now. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm also working on getting a co-host for this podcast. So you can hear two people talking, not just me. Um, but thank you guys for listening to this podcast. Make sure you check out my Instagram at angels.vlogs and YouTube at angels.vlogs. I uh, basically make baseball videos, especially vlogs of me going to Angels games. Check them out if you're interested. Um, I'm also going to be making, like I said, video versions of these podcasts on my YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that out if you want to see a video version um, of this podcast. God, I'm getting tired of talking right now here. Um, we got, what, 40 seconds to go on this podcast. Um... And also for you guys uh, watching the, and listening to the video version, you can also check out the just audio version, link in bio, also on the podcast app. Um, a lot of different ways to listen to this podcast. And like I said, these podcasts are going to be getting better and better. I'm going to work harder on these. So definitely make sure you stay tuned every week if you're an Angels fan. I'm going to be updating every week on how the Angels are doing and how they're looking in the playoffs, everything like that um and yeah guys um until next time i gotta wait like five more seconds it's gotta be exactly 40 uh minutes okay later oh okay that is it that was kind of shaky stay tuned these podcasts i didn't say it in the audio version but they're probably going to be usually around 30 minutes. I had a lot to talk about, so it went for 40 minutes here. Um, and I got this GoPro for my birthday. And I have to return it because it's not been working. This thing just recorded for like 10 minutes, then it just stopped recording. Like, what? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to stick to this GoPro. Um, I turned it on mid-podcast, so you might have missed a couple sentences. Um, anyway... That is the video. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned to my channel. I'm probably going to be posting every day for now on, at least for the rest of the summer. Um, I'm really tired right now. It's really late. I got to get to sleep because um, I just worked the last few hours on this podcast. Um, my voice is done, obviously, as you guys can hear. Um, make sure you like the video. I don't remember if I already said this. Um, make sure you subscribe. And yeah, thank you guys if you listened or watched this whole thing. I'm impressed, and yeah, peace.